Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord Modded, and we're going through the, the diplomacy screen almost immediately here because, as you can see, the war exhaustion has now subsided as much as I'm willing to let it because, well, I'm kind of antsy. I want to get this going. I want to, well, declare the, the war against these guys. And then we're going to literally go straight in with my own army into Maranath. Now, this is... Yeah, this is maybe a little bit problematic, okay? Because, look at this. There are 815 enemies in here. And I'm a bit worried about that. Because there is an army very, very close by. I saw one with about 350 troops. So we have to be very cautious about this. But what we're going to do is we're going to go straight in. I just want to make sure that I've spec'd all my... Aha! Look at this. I did not spec all my points. So we do have... Um, two perks right here. One that allows us to ignore enemy armor and re reduce this the recruitment cost of infantry troops. And the other one is dealing 50% more damage with one-handed weapons against shields. I personally feel like that one sounds the most fun. So we're going to do that one. Yeah, that seems pretty good to me. All right, so let's do it. Uh, we're going to go straight on in, and that's it. We're not going to do anything with the siege towers or the battering ram or anything like that, because as I said in the previous episode, I personally feel like this is more effective than, uh, than waiting for those uh, pieces of siege equipment to be built, unless you are destroying the walls themselves. But even then, destroying the walls themselves and then using siege towers and battering rams basically makes no sense whatsoever because the walls are already down there's really no need for you to build anything like that and yes okay i know some people said that this sword does not look that good okay so here's the thing sure maybe the sword doesn't look particularly good but it's shiny you see it's shiny that's the only thing that i was really looking at there right there i was thinking to myself i'm a, I'm, I'm apparently a magpie because i'm literally thinking to myself this is shiny i like it and that's it but yeah <laughs> That's the reason why I was like, yeah, this looks pretty cool. I mean, just look at this guy up ahead of us right here. He's got a, he's got an axe that is just wood with a little bit of steel on the top. And that's it. We're, we're literally wielding a golden sword. I mean, how can we say no to that, right? I mean, obviously, gold is not exactly the, uh, the hardest of metals. <laughs> but still, it's, uh, it looks pretty cool. And that's basically all I was really mentioning there oh so much damage we're, we're, oh this is actually really nice good good suggestion from one of you by the way thank you very much for that because you said something like uh, why don't you make a one-handed sword and yeah i think that actually makes quite a bit of sense hello there we are able to do quite a bit more bear in mind though that the blade is quite short i might want to get a slightly longer one for the next time that i create something but this is looking pretty cool and it seems to be working for us quite nicely so let's hope that I don't get shot in the face. Let's just block while I do that. And let's just go. Oh, yeah. This is this is a lot easier to use as well. I don't know whether you've noticed, but I seem to be a lot more effective as I go for the wonderful headshot right there. Ah, oh, and then he moves. Yeah, that's great. But yeah, I seem to be a lot more effective in melee combat in comparison to me using the, uh, the mace that I was using beforehand. So... I'm pretty happy about the uh, the difference. Oh, what a, what is up with these guys? What is up with these guys? They're running away and they're being extremely irritating with all their dipping and diving and dodging and you know the five Ds or whatever they are. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen that movie, so yes, my reference is probably going to be inaccurate to the high heavens. So yes, it is, but still, you know what is it? Dip, dive, dodge, duck, and dodge isn't it isn't it like two two dodges right isn't that the joke yeah i think so anyway we're going to be going over here and trying to maximize the amount of skill up that we have uh next time i level up actually i'm going to be specking into one-handed because i would like to get to 250 eventually you know that's definitely something that i would like to do so hopefully i'll be able to do that don't get yourself killed now byron that would not be very good you've got to wait until you're at least 60 to be able to do that nice we're getting some good kills right here even if we are not getting actual oh dear even if we're not getting actual kills at least we're doing damage and that is kind of good 
I really do like the fact that we've taken that perk now that increases our damage against shields because you can see here a lot of enemies are blocking me and that is going to do so much more damage to their defensive potential. Yes, take out that shield bearer, that's what you get. There we go. And now we also want to make sure that we don't get killed by any of these big two-handed wielding guys because those are the ones that you really need to be afraid of. Not not so much the guys with, with their one-handeds or anything like that, but the guys with those two-handeds that can kill you extremely quickly. Those are the ones that we have to be very aware of indeed. But it seems like we're doing okay. And I'm almost at, two, ooh, two, look at that, 260, 261 actually we're, we're currently uh, running with right now. That's pretty nice. My athletic skill is really bad. Come on, get him. Get him. Yes, yes. The more kills I can get, the better. That's going to give me more experience in the long run. Every single time you get a kill, you do get a lump sum of the experience that you otherwise would have missed out on if you did not get the kill. So I am very much liking that. Let's see if I can shoot him. Oh, he actually survived. I can't believe it. I thought that he would have been injured at least a little bit. There we go. Finished him off. What are those guys doing? Okay, that guy... Um, <laughs> that guy is doing something. I'm not entirely sure what he's doing, but he is uh, somewhat stuck. And now they are actually running on as soon as I go a little bit closer to them. But yeah, you can see that this guy is completely stuck for some unknown reason. But... I guess that just gives me a little bit more experience, which I'm perfectly happy with. And there you go. Maranath has been captured. And I think I'm probably going to be taking ownership over this. Because I don't know whether I can really trust. Can I trust in the other other fellows in my, uh, in my faction? Can I trust in them to actually do a good job of defending this? Probably not, right? Probably not. So we're going to show mercy right here. Show mercy. I'm going to claim the thief. And then we're just going to go straight in to improve garrison. And we're going to do some recruiting straight away. We're going to go for 350 troops this time around. Go for tier 5. And then that's that's what we'll go for right there. Okay, let's go and uh, sell a bunch of prisoners while we can. And obviously we do have the loot as well. So let's go and sell that loot. There we are. That's a quick 17,000 right there too. I don't even know why you would pillage... A town to be honest I feel like pillaging a town is well with the exception of maybe pillaging your mortal enemy that has been you know nipping at your heels you know for the entirety of your campaign you know sure I can completely understand that but I can't really understand it if you're planning on taking it for yourself or something like that in the near future but there you go 61 troops available for upgrade can't believe it Wow that was some pretty significant leveling up right there. And uh, the only castle, or indeed fief, that the Vagias have under their control now is Cantrek Castle. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to wait here in Maranath for a little bit of time. And I also need to just work out something real fast too, because I need to obviously find a governor that can take control of this Vagia culture. I don't think I actually have one. Do I? Uh, it's highly unlikely in my opinion. Oh dear. Vlandia. We do have one from Vlandia. One from the Republic. Nathanos is obviously from the Republic as well. Empire. Rodok. Republic. Republic. Yeah, well, of course. They're, they're my brother. and uh, Well, technically, yeah, they're my younger brother and younger sister right there. Okay, so that's obviously not going to help me out too much, but maybe we can find someone here. Kurgit. Empire. Right. Uh, okay, well, that, that, that that's great. That's not, uh, not particularly good, is it? Okay, well, I'm going to leave here, but hopefully there's not going to be an army that comes out of nowhere and then decides to besiege it, because I just want to check the tavern at Sionan really fast, because I would like to see... Are you serious? Okay. Apparently there are no companions here whatsoever. Fantastic. Alright. Well, whatever the case. Oh, look at that. Morentios was killed in battle. And actually killed properly this time. Up against an enemy vassal. Instead of being up against some random manhunter party or something. 
All right, so the garrison here is quite significant, but I think we should be okay. I mean, in comparison to, you know, what it was moments ago, because I literally checked the population here, and it was, I think, totaling about 60 units, and now they have 140. So they've done a really good job in reinforcing this particular siege. But that is not going to help them one bit. As, I, as I've said, I feel like this ladder strategy, it is overwhelmingly good in comparison to using the siege equipment. And I don't think that's how it should be, to be honest. But please, developers, if you're seeing this ever at any point, please don't nerf the ladders. I think the ladders are excellent the way they are. But what, what we could do, maybe, is make it so that the battering ram and the siege towers and so on and so forth, maybe they move a little bit faster to the walls because that's the only reason why they are kind of bad because they do move so incredibly slowly that it's very difficult to make them useful because you, you could see right there in Marinath we went right in with just siege ladders just these little ladders right here and we were able to completely overwhelm the opponent before they even had an opportunity to defend and that's the main strength of these ladders. You can literally just run straight in there, assault extremely fast, and then you're done. And, well, to be frank, siege equipment like the towers and the battering ram, it just takes way too long. And obviously it should take long because these are massive pieces of equipment that shouldn't feel like they weigh nothing, obviously. They should feel heavy. But... As a result of them feeling like they're heavy, it just takes them way too long to go anywhere. So it's kind of unfortunate, isn't it? Yeah, kind of unfortunate. Okay, hello there. Going to shoot you. Thank you very much. I'm shooting a bunch of guys as they walk up the stairs. <laughs> they're just like, ah, you know what? I'm not going to switch to melee. How dare you? I'm not going to switch to melee one bit. Yeah, okay, sure. You don't have to switch to melee and I'll just murder you from afar then. There we are. You know what? I really do need to get more one-handed weapon proficiency, so I'm probably going to do that. I should probably try and level up my smithing skill a little bit as well. So I will probably try to do that with making, you know, just spam making some javelins or something like that. I'm not going to actually sell the javelins because, uh, or, or should I? I'm not sure because on the one hand, I feel like selling javelins is kind of cheap. Um, <laughs> I mean, not literally, obviously, because, you know, selling javelins is one of the most lucrative ways to make cash. But on the other hand, I don't really want to make it so that I've just made a million gold in, in doing nothing, basically. You know, it is one of the easiest ways to make cash. But in doing so, it makes the game so much easier. So I don't know. I mean, we already have 500,000. So does it really matter whether we have 500,000 or a million? Doesn't really matter, does it? Because, well, people are not going to be joining our faction anyway, by the looks of things. Anyway, show mercy. I will not be claiming this. I do not want to have the bother of dealing with the castle. Oh, it seems like, oh, they took something. Are you, are you serious? How dare you? You utter scoundrel imbecilic faction known as the Vagiers. I will be attempting to uh, take this back as fast as possible. A rebel faction has emerged. What? Okay, thankfully it's not our clan that is having that problem. Oikos Arotia? Wait a minute. Is it our fact? Is it our? Is it? Is it our faction? No. Where are they? Where? Where? Where are they? Because I don't see them. Where's the rebel faction? Am I? Am I missing them? Or? Well, Bruce has reached the age of five. Okay. Well, he needs a little bit of assistance. <laughs> As you could quite clearly tell, children in this game are absolutely insane. If you have a really good character, as it is, or a really highly skilled character then you're going to have a really, really nice time of things because as you can see, just look at look at how much it just raw value um our child has right here. It's really crazy. Um let's see here. Oh, uh, this is just uh, focus points and skill points and things like that. Okay, yeah, we're gonna probably go for riding skill. And his endurance has increased by ten. Uh, increased by one even. Okay, yeah, sure, we'll do that. 
I mean, that makes no sense whatsoever, to be honest. But to be fair, if he starts at level 1, he's going to gain all of those attributes really, really fast anyway. So it doesn't really make uh, that much difference. Anyway, let's go in here. 90, really? 90 units? Okay. Uh, I wonder where the army went, to be honest. Where did the army go? Oh, well. Let's just level up uh, some of these guys. I'm going to just make sure that they're all leveling up properly. Yes, they are. Okay, fantastic. We upgraded 11 units. And hopefully we'll be able to take this. And you can see here, building the siege camp. Boom. There's the siege camp. Done. How long did that take me? That was like, what? 10 seconds? Maybe like 10, 15 seconds or so to build the siege camp? And so I don't even need to wait for the battering ram or even the uh, the trebuchets or you know anything like that I don't have to wait for the blisters and so on and then you don't have to suffer the collateral damage either from the bombardment from the various siege equipment because as we've seen in the past in this very series the collateral damage is so incredibly devastating that a force such as mine that has about 400 and something units is going to very quickly be diminished and it's kind of astonishing how fast that can happen but that's exactly the reason why I decided to sort of like go back to the drawing board and kind of see what I could do to make sieges just that much more efficient and that's exactly what is happening here so I tried it I tried it without building anything and it seems to be working really really nicely so I mean, especially in these sieges, I mean, obviously I can say that right now, because, I mean, you can see exactly what kind of defense the enemy has. I mean, they have nothing, to be honest. I mean, you know, let's be fair here, you know, they really don't have anything that is going to be that devastating to us. But if you look at Maranath and what we just accomplished there, then, then it's definitely going to make a, a big difference. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, not so much. Okay, so let's see. Can I get to 275 in one-handed weapons? I'm not entirely sure. I'm actually trying to keep on the move right now. If I can keep on the move and can, can continue slashing here, I might be able to level up my athletic skill. But I think my athletic skill really doesn't have a huge amount in uh, focus points right now. So it's probably not really going to make that much that much difference but I really miss being a character that can run really fast with just their legs to be honest because the way that it is right now I feel extremely slow in comparison to the duelist for example the duelist was really really fast on his feet and there we have it after a small zoom zoom we were able to achieve victory obviously I mean that was a pretty much foregone conclusion right there I mean there's no one anywhere that thought we were going to lose that. But the Maranath Siege just shows us that we are pretty strong right now. And I feel like we probably would be able to take on quite a few sieges. But bear in mind that we did lose quite a few units in that siege itself. So if we did take something on like that, then it would probably result in a lot of casualties for us. Which would be pretty bad. Anyway, Goloran Castle is actually under siege right now. I'm hopeful that... Could one of our armies actually do something? Could they actually start fighting and uh, preventing these, these armies from doing things? That would be fantastic. But there you go. Okay, so we seem to have a little bit of an attack on our hands here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another lance as well, by the way. So next time I'm actually in a town, I'm going to do that. But after, that's after this, of course. Is this guy the leader of his own, uh, his own clan? He is. Ooh, okay. I'm going to try something here, okay? So we're going to, oh, I can't try to persuade him. Ah, I'm infinitely frustrated by this fellow now. But he doesn't have any fiefs, as we can quite clearly tell, because obviously the Vegiers have nothing. But generally, what we want to do is we want to make, make it so that, well... I was hopeful that what we'd be able to do is try to persuade him to join us. Even if he doesn't have a fief, I don't really care. I just want the manpower, you know? I just want more manpower as much as I can possibly get. And that would have been fun. 
but unfortunately, yeah, the developers made it so that you couldn't um, persuade people when they're in an army because it was providing some rather interesting interactions. And uh, if you were going to speak to an army leader, for example, you could pretty much dismantle the entire army just by persuading them to join your faction. I personally felt like that was a really cool way to do things because it basically made it so that, you know, if you were successful in your attempt to persuade, that it would impact the game in a very significant manner. Whereas at the moment, now it's just like, well, persuasion is kind of useless, at least in my opinion. I mean, by all means, let me know if, if you yourself in your game have had success with persuasion without having to spend a massive amount of cash and what kind of modifiers you use to make that successful. Because from my perspective, I feel like persuasion has been turned from probably one of the most interesting and powerful abilities into being something that is, well, not so great. And it is, is mostly used to get married. I mean, obviously getting married is pretty important. You know, having children, obviously pretty important to, you know, just in case your character gets killed, you never know. Um, but generally, yeah, persuasion used to be super, super powerful, as I said before, with everything has a price and everything like that. But now, yeah, now it's this and it's uh, a little bit different. But yeah, um, let me know. Let me know in the comments if you've had uh, success using charm skill to, uh, you know, persuade anyone to join you and what kind of situation you were in at the time because that would give me a good opportunity to sort of learn a little bit more about that particular mechanic and what has changed since the time that I was using that almost all the time to be quite successful in our campaigns back then with the original Byron. And if you've uh, not seen the original Byron's series, then you should probably check that out. That is the Kuzate Carnate one. Uh, that was, I think that was the second... Yeah, that was the second ever series that I created on Bannerlord, and it went a lot better than the first one. Let's just say that. Because, obviously, in the first one, I was getting... Yeah, you know, I was, I was kind of getting used to the whole combat system, because the combat system from Warband, in my opinion at least, is very, very different. Yes, sure, it has the same cardinal direction uh, sort of attacks, and, uh, you know, it has a, a similar combat system in that way, but the weapons, the weapons feel very different. You know, in Bannerlord, everything feels like it has a weight to it, and in Warband, everything happens a lot faster. There's a lot more instant, instant feedback, if you know what I mean, and the feedback that you get is very minimal in comparison to... Bannerlord. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of impact to your blows and your strikes, and uh, even your your uh, your ranged attacks as well. So obviously, in the first series, I'm still getting used to that. And um, in Byron's one, I, I, I became a little better. <laughs> I'm not going to say that I became amazing, but I did become a little bit better at fighting in that one. Ooh, hello there, Pokey Pokey. There we are. That's what he gets. That is what he gets. Oh, yeah. So, um, my new lance. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to forego making a lance that is couchable. Because I found that making a lance that has that capability severely restricts the amount of reach and damage and everything else that I can possibly add to a weapon. And just because I want it to be couchable doesn't make it better or worse or whatever than anything else. So I should really just ignore the fact that it's going to be couchable or not and then just go forward with what I think. So I'm kind of interested to see what's going to happen with that. So let's head on over straight away after we are finished here. There we go. Okay, so we're finished. Very nicely done. And no one, no one died. I've got to say, I'm actually kind of surprised about that, but we're going to let all of them go because you never know. Maybe they're going to end up joining us at some point or maybe we'll try to persuade them from someone else's faction because maybe they'll defect to the Vlandians or the Batanians or whoever. And if they do in, end up doing that, then of course we would prefer that they actually end up joining us. But yeah, we'll see. Anyway, let's go through here. Let's go to the uh, two-handed pole arms here. And let's see what we can do. Let's make something really, 
really good, eh? I'm, I'm looking for the most reach possible, all right? So the long glaive head, if you want a slashing polearm, use the long glaive head and you are going to have an absolutely fantastic time. It is probably one of the most powerful weapons in the game, at least in my opinion. So if you want a really, really strong weapon, go for that. But I'm going to be making something with the fine steel hewing spearhead because this gives me the most reach and that's what I'm going for here. I'm going to try and get the most reach possible. So I'm going to make the largest weapon that I possibly can. 230, 280. Okay. 280 length so far is the maximum that I've seen. But I'm going to go for whatever is the longest. No, that is it. This is the longest one. Okay, fantastic. Let's increase that even further. 321 weapon reach. Maybe I can even get more. As you can see, this spearhead pommel right here, uh, unfortunately, it is going to make the difficulty just so incredibly high. Hmm. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create some javelins. Let's see if I can... Yeah, let's create these ones. Let's create some javelins right here. Just some really, really cheap javelins. I don't really want to make anything uh, too extravagant or anything like that. So we're just going to make two of these. Hey, yeah, look at that. Gave me 15 skill points instantly. Six skill points right there as well. Okay, so that's perfect. That is exactly what I wanted to do. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go over here. We're just going to smelt a couple of things just so we can unlock some additional parts. I have so many weapons that really there's just so many different things that we can unlock here. Oh, I don't have any more charcoal. Of course I don't. Okay, let's just get a bunch more of that. Thank you. And then we can continue smelting these things down. Now, bear in mind that because I'm using Chaos's Kales Tweaks, it is allowing me to see which item is going to give me new parts, which I would highly recommend. Even if you're not going to use any of the other tweaks that the mod has available to it, which personally I'd recommend because it does make the game so much more enjoyable but that's obviously up to you but what I'm saying is being able to completely eliminate the RNG part of smithing in my opinion is really good because that basically allows you to more adequately unlock parts and get exactly the kind of thing you want to be using eventually. So you're going to be getting all these new parts available to you and you don't have to continuously craft again and again and again and again and again to be able to unlock the thing that you really want to get eventually. So you can just smelt these things down once and then look at all these smithing parts that I've just unlocked right here. It's so incredibly effective. Anyway, let's go over here. Uh, I'm going to actually just get a couple more things but yeah there we go okay so now we're going to create the longest weapon that I can so let's have a look what is going to give me more length from these things I've seen 12 so far no this is the longest so there we go let's increase that increase the size of this and we'll make the 281 oh 290 290 is is, is better oh I had no idea okay yeah let's do that one and then let's let's do the spearhead pommel as well. That's 328 weapon reach. And as you can see, the difficulty of this is 206. So I should be able to do this and potentially gain something really, really good. If it, if it procs, that is. No, it didn't proc. Okay, let's call it something like... Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it barge pole just because it's hilarious. So we'll call it barge pole. There you go. Because it, quite frankly, is one, isn't it? Ah, yes. Okay, let's have a look here. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so it is worse in every single way from my previous one, with the exception of length. Let me just go to the very bottom here, because that's where my other one has, has gone to. Yeah, so as you can see here, the length is the only thing that has increased. And I've lost 10 handling as well, which is obviously going to make things very, very difficult for me to use. But I'm actually thinking that this is going to be super effective against a wide variety of different opponents. So I'm looking forward to checking that out in the next battle. Anyway, 
There's only one castle remaining that the Vagias have. We're going to be dealing with that in the next episode, and then we'll see what other factions we can potentially attack. I think I'm going to have to go back to friendly territory before that, though, and give some more units to Sylvind and Nathanos, because it seems like they've lost a bunch of their own forces, and we'll need to resupply them. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.